Okay, so just a few quick updates on the Super Jewel Ringer Looper Circuit. And uh, the first thing I want to show is the configuration. The schematic for this is posted at laserhacker.com. Um, and check the video description for a link to that. Right now I've got the uh, circuit running on a 9 volt battery. The capacitor, the run capacitor is disconnected. And you see the current consumption going down a little bit and that's because I've added a piece of paper here on the rectifier between the positive and the negative points on the rectifier. And that's just because I'm up here at the house and I don't have a resistor or a pot up here to adjust that. So I'm just using some paper and when I blow in the paper the humidity in the paper increases and I can control the resistance that way at least adequate enough for this uh, test I want to show you. So you can see the current consumption and the LED brightness off the 9 volt battery. Now watch what happens when I touch the uh, terminals here to the capacitor. See how it got a lot brighter and the current draw dropped down and it's under 20 microamps. Let me remove that. You can see the current draw went back up and the LEDs got dim. I connect the run capacitor and uh, it drops back down. It's almost, uh, especially as it gets lower here on the current draw, it will drop by almost half. So it's an important thing to note, the uh, electrolytic capacitor or the film capacitor that you choose to use in the circuit makes a big difference in how the circuit behaves. So very important thing to note and I think this demonstrates that effect very, very well. So again, without the uh, capacitor, with the capacitor. Now this is a 450 volt, uh, 47 microfarad uh, electrolytic capacitor that's in the circuit. And uh, I'll disconnect from the 9 volt battery here and let it just run on that capacitor here for a little bit. And um, I'll set up a few other uh, experiments here with the uh, circuit. I'll show it running in the super low, <laughs> under 1 microamp run mode as well. So stay tuned and at the end of this video I'll do an extended duration run time with a larger load as well. So yeah, let's carry on. Okay, so I just wanted to show this circuit running in the very low uh, sub microamp current setting. And you can see here that it's running along on about, let me get the camera focused, about half a microamp. So it'll run along on a quarter to half a microamp when it's properly tuned up like this. Let me disconnect uh, from the battery. So now it's uh, blinking along on the film capacitor alone. And uh, you can see the LEDs flashing along there. I'm going to increase the blink speed by increasing the resistance here. Give a little humidity to this paper. So you can see that just by blowing on the paper, I increase the humidity and sped up the, uh, the blink cycle a little bit. So pretty interesting, very fun to experiment with. Um, and definitely by far my record for running on a film capacitor. I mean, prior to this, this would never even have been possible. So, increase the speed a little bit. So, increase the humidity on the uh, paper and the circuit runs on. So, I've got to get a, a better resistor. I'll get a pot on that so I can control all of that. But, uh, for now, it does give you a bit of an idea of how this thing runs on the low current setting. So, Okay, so here's the uh, latest update on the uh, Super Jewel Ringer Looper circuit. Um, I've got this thing down now where it's running very, very stable. I wound a new uh, transformer core and uh, I was able to get this other one to work off and on intermittently, but I wound a new one and it's definitely back at the previous performance where I can blink LEDs at half a microamp or less. And I can also run this uh, larger LED bulb with great stability here. So let me disconnect uh, from the battery pack here. I'm using the same uh, 50 volt, 10,000 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. So note the uh, waveform on the scope as I remove the uh, battery. This one is the most stable that uh, I've ever created so let me just put the battery out of the way here so yeah anyway you can see that it's just very 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 stable so let me come up here and uh, bring this out here so you can see it nice and clean very very nice I'm very happy with the uh, current circuit so check out laserhacker.com for the schematic um, I've got an updated schematic with this current arrangement here, and it's very, very simple. Um, 
just one single transistor, one uh, rectifier. And I've got the schematic that it's a very simple arrangement. And I really love the fact that there's not a lot of components, there's no resistors or anything of that nature in this. So um, definitely it's been a, a fun bit of experimenting with this unique transformer design. Um, on this video later, I'll go ahead and I'll take apart um, one of these transformers. Um, I've got one that it's a smaller one. It never really worked correctly, but I built it with exactly the same construction technique. So later on in the video, I'll take one of these apart and you can see how... Um, I make these and that will be helpful and the schematic also has a uh, 3d representation of one as well but um, anyway I'm really really happy with it I've had a lot of fun seeing a lot of unique uh, things in the experimenting with this and I'm by no means uh, finished but I'm just very happy to be back at the point I was at earlier where I said that it ran indefinitely now it doesn't run on forever um, I didn't expect it to but it does run for a very long time, as you can see here, with just great stability. So um, I'll get into doing timed run tests and things of that nature in the future. But when I was tuning this, um, I was actually working with a 47 microfarad uh, capacitor. And I would uh, adjust different parameters on the circuit and the transformer until I would get the longest run times uh, with the same bulb on that. And uh, it's amazing how long the thing will ring on for, even with the smaller microfarad capacitor, especially if you put these smaller uh, LEDs on there in the blink mode. But um, anyway, I don't know what else to say about it. You know, I, I think I'll go ahead and let this one run down here on the video. And uh, once it's run itself down, then I'll go ahead and uh, show the transformer dissection. Um, so you can see how those are made. <clears throat> I'm really happy that the uh, frequency is now <laughs> at, <clears throat> at a higher pitch so that it's not such an annoying ring. Um, I do listen to the frequency and I tune with that and it actually helps in the uh, tuning of these transformers. So it's one of the reasons uh, I'm not always opposed to it being in the video, etc. It's it's part of the nature of the circuit. But uh, anyway, it runs on here. <laughs> so feel free to fast forward the video if you want to get up to the transformer dissection and uh, skip over this part. But I'm just going to go ahead and, and let this do a continuous rundown. This is the uh, actually the, the second time I've let it do the full rundown just because it takes a while and I'm usually impatient and doing changes to the circuit, etc. So I guess I could say a few things about the transformer itself here while this is running. Um, one of the legs of the transformer, I'm sorry, one of the wires comes up here and I'm just touching it to the uh, central screw shaft. And um, that's, there's a lot of different things I've been able to do with this free wire. It'll run separated free as well. Um, it's got a slightly higher current draw with it separated. I've also experimented with grounding both to the wire itself or to the wire as well as the uh, pot core transformer. So that's definitely something, a point to experiment with. At this point, I have not tried different um, ratios on my primary, secondary, or on this third winding. That's really what I want to go into next. I want to experiment with this third winding. We look at the schematic, you'll see uh, the nature of it, but I really want to experiment with different ratios on that. I also want to experiment with different lengths of copper foil tape. Um, that will be a very interesting thing to experiment with as well. I do think that it's a necessary part of the circuit, although I don't know that for certain. And until I wind a transformer exactly the same without the tape and see if I can get this similar kind of performance, um, I just won't know. So a couple things uh, I want to continue to experiment with there. Oh, so again, the wave, it's just so stable completely different than any of the other uh, jewel ringer circuits I've made in the past where the 
waveform just keeps tightening up as the circuit dies out. So anyway, I can see the intensity of the light has gone down a little bit, so I expect it will uh, not be too much longer. If there's a slight interruption, I I didn't anticipate the need of uh, extra space on my iPhone here, but if this runs on too long, I may run out of space and uh, have to delete some other video clips on the iPhone just to make room for this. Now I do think that it can run longer with the scope um, unattached. Right now you can see that the scope's connected um, on one of the legs on the load there as well as the um, the negative back here to the transistor. So that's the scope connection points. But uh, I really do like doing long-term runs without the scope connected. So Anyway and I, I've seen some questions um, down in the comments section on the video, and uh, I have tested this, you know, out in the car driving between my workshop and the house. It runs uh, the same there as it runs here in the workshop, as well as in my house. I've not put it in a Faraday cage or anything of that nature, um, but it runs the same in different environments. It's it's not dependent on this environment or some stray AC coupling or something of that nature. So. Anyway, man, uh, it's just so stable. <laughs> oh, boy. You can definitely see that the intensity on the bulb has gone down a few degrees less, so I'm assuming that the uh, the process will stop here pretty soon, but like I said earlier, if it doesn't, I may run out of space. You know, I didn't set up a tripod for this, but maybe I could uh, actually take apart the transformer while this is uh, running on there. I don't know if I can do that with one hand very easily, but let me see if I can even locate it here. I would like to get the uh, dying sequence on video if possible when the light dies out eventually. Yeah, it's definitely getting dimmer, but it's still going, so I'll let it keep running here. Just looking around to see if I can happen to find that other transformer that I want to take apart and do that while this is going. Fortunately, I don't see it right off. All right, I located it, so 
it's this little guy here. And uh, for I don't know if it's the nature of the ferrite in this one or what it is, but it just never worked that well. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take this one apart and uh, show you the construction. So the uh, the LEDs are just barely glowing here, so I'm going to go ahead and keep this rolling. It's definitely getting down uh, to a lower voltage now in the capacitor. You can see the waveform is just staying very stable. So one of the, uh, the nice things about this particular circuit. So anyway, there, it died. Very good. So I will uh, switch over to the transformer dissection portion. Okay, so as I promised, a uh, dissection of one of the transformers. So this is one of the smaller units that because of the ferrite or winding ratios or wire gauges or whatever reason, it did not work uh, correctly. But the construction method is exactly the same as I did on the larger ones. So you can see here that this is the um, outer, what I call the third winding right here. And uh, we'll go ahead and begin by getting this off. So under that first... Uh, Third, I guess I should say under that third layer, I have uh, this copper foil. And the copper foil is connected, um, unfortunately I broke it off, but it was connected right here to this wire. So you can see the solder there where that was connected. Let me go ahead and get the uh, copper foil off. So there's our copper foil. So again, this uh, the second layer of wire, this really thin gauge wire here, what I did is when I brought it up and it was terminating out here, I just soldered the end of it to this copper and wrapped it around the uh, transformer like that. So that's what's going on there. And uh, because I accidentally broke that off, the uh, wire got hidden down in there all right so now so far in all of these I've just been filling them up with uh, wire and uh, so far my best success has been with uh, the larger gauge wire the uh, 18 gauge and the uh, oh, I think I did one with 24 gauge but uh, Anyway, so you can see them getting down here to the bottom, and that's where this uh, winding right here started. So that brings me to the first layer. So unfortunately, I thought I hit the uh, record button and I did not so let me just show this again the uh, the last or the actually your starting layer this was just wound one complete layer up on top of this copper winding here so I took that off and uh, showed the bottom layer there so it's late folks sorry about the uh, mix-ups here on this video I meant to do it all in one continuous shot but anyway I'm uh, very encouraged with the progress so far, although I'm ready to take a break from this whole thing for a little bit and uh, catch up on the rest of life. But hey, let's all keep experimenting and sharing what we find.